Anime Recap A kind-hearted slave fights to save the life of a wounded slave. After discovering that Gardar had escaped, Einar rushes to Sverkel's residence, hoping to find a way to help Arnhade. Snake is also present at the scene, waiting for Gardar to arrive. When Einar and Thorfinn arrive, Badger spots them, but Snake orders his men to ignore them. Arnhaid informs Einar that she had helped Gardar escape by cutting his ropes because she feared the guards would kill them both. However, Gardar went on a killing spree and murdered all the guests who had attended the event. Thorfinn senses that they are being watched and instructs Einar to assist Arnhaid with the dishes. Arnhid then reveals that after Gardar was injured, they sought refuge at Sverkel's home. While she was tending to his injuries, Gardar passed out. She managed to conceal him with Sverkel's help. Snake then arrived, anticipating Gardar's return, and he and two of his men are currently inside Sverkel's house. Einar is puzzled about why Arnhid, who is pregnant, would put herself in danger by helping Gardar escape. Overwhelmed by emotions, Arnhaid cries and admits that she was hoping for a future with Gardar and their unborn child. Thorfinn inquires about Gardar's condition, but Arnhaid reveals that he was still bleeding when she hid him. Einar offers to assist Arnhaid in escaping with Gardar, and Thorfinn agrees to lend a hand as well. Later, Arnhaid expresses her desire to prepare lunch, but Snake reminds her that she needs to stay outside where she can be used as bait for Gardar. As Arnhaid prepares the meal, Sverko remarks that slaves are simply unfortunate individuals and if luck had not been on their side, they could have ended up as slaves themselves. Snake informs Sverko that Gardar deserves to die for the people he killed. Sverko, on the other hand, suggests that Snake give up his sword, implying that he's not from the area and that it is the reason he ended up in this situation. Sverko offers Snake his land and suggests that he works there which is a much better life than fighting with his sword. Sverko cannot walk anymore and knows that his time is limited, which is why he feels indebted to Snake for reading him the Bible. Sverko believes that this is a chance for Snake to turn his life around. However, Snake declines the offer, stating that he doesn't want to do field work. Suddenly, Spider interrupts, informing Snake that he sees a man hiding behind a tree who he thinks is Gardar. Snake takes the bait, and his men give chase to the disguised Einar. Meanwhile, Thorfinn makes his way towards Sverkel's house and asks to borrow his horse and cart. Sverkel agrees, but suggests that he join them too to avoid drawing any suspicion. As they head back towards the house, Thorfinn discovers that Gardar is still alive, but barely holding on after losing a lot of blood. While chasing Einar, Snake starts to become suspicious when he realizes that he is still running despite his injuries. He orders Badger and Spider to continue the pursuit, but warns them not to engage if it turns out to be Gardar. Instead, Snake decides to turn back, much to Badger's surprise. With haste, Thorfinn prepares the cart and urges Arnhade to join him in a swift departure towards the southern border. Once they cross into another country, it will be difficult for Snake's men to pursue them. To further divert the attention of their pursuers, Thorfinn plans to leave Arnhade partway through the journey. He asks Sverkel to accompany them to the edge of the farm, and the old man agrees. After carefully placing Gardar onto the cart, they begin to make their escape. Suddenly, Snake appears, having dismounted his horse to approach them silently. He sees that Gardar is unconscious and demands that Thorfinn surrender him warning that he won't negotiate. However, Thorfinn realizes that if he can overpower Snake, they still have a chance to escape. A vision of Askeladd then appears next to Thorfinn, who states that Thorfinn doesn't have a choice and will have to raise his fists in order to help someone. He guesses that Snake also have a go reason to fight and wonders if Thorfinn will remain a pacifist or fight to help someone else. Askeladd wonders which of the two paths lead to becoming a true warrior, but states that Thorfinn doesn't have time to think about it. As Snake approaches, Thorfinn attacks him. Snake manages to dodge and attacks himself, however Thorfinn also manages to dodge and block his attack. Askeladd tells Thorfinn that he can't defeat him half asleep and Thorfinn then takes his usual fighting stance. 
Snake finds it an odd stance, but looking at him, he realizes it's a stance using double daggers. Thorfinn's heart was pounding as he managed to barely avoid Snake's flurry of attacks. He had never faced an opponent as fast and skilled as Snake, and it was taking all of his concentration just to keep up. Snake, too, was impressed with Thorfinn's abilities. Despite being unarmed, Thorfinn had yet to receive a hit. As they fought, Snake couldn't help but wonder about Thorfinn's past. He recalled Thorfinn saying that he didn't have anything good in his life, and he wondered what kind of horrors Thorfinn had faced in his youth. Similarly, Thorfinn couldn't help but ponder how a warrior as skilled as Snake had ended up as a mere guard on a farm. Thorfinn managed to land a solid punch on Snake, but as he went for a second hit, Snake dodged and managed to graze Thorfinn's cheek with his blade. Thorfinn winced at the pain, but he didn't let it distract him. He continued to fight, wondering how he had gotten himself into this situation. Snake, on the other hand, decided to refocus and went in for even faster attacks. Thorfinn's dodging skills were impressive, but a surprise kick from Snake sent him flying, leaving the cart and Gardar behind Snake. As Snake observes Gardar inside the cart, Arnhade pleads with him not to kill Gardar. Snake responds that he cannot overlook what Gardar has done, as he killed five of his men. Sverkel expresses his condolences and offers to sell his farm to compensate, but Snake interrupts him, saying that it is not about money. Snake admits that he and his men are foolish scoundrels and, because of their actions, they cannot use their real names. However, that does not mean their lives are worthless. He asks Thorfinn and Arnhade whether they think Gardar's life is worth more than the lives of five of his men, but they remain silent. Snake concludes that life can only be paid for with life, and he turns and stabs Gardar. As Snake confronts Arnhade and Thorfinn, he accuses them of avenging Gardar's death and asks if they will continue to fight. Snake is certain that Arnhade is the one who freed Gardar, and threatens that they will be punished accordingly. However, things take a surprising turn when Gardar suddenly stands up and attacks Snake, holding him tightly and choking him. In the struggle, Snake manages to stab Gardar's leg a few times, but Gardar refuses to let him go. As Snake loses consciousness, Thorfinn threatens to kill Gardar if he doesn't stop, but he finds Gardar too strong to resist. Eventually, Arnhade intervenes and urges Gardar to stop, and together they leave the scene. Gardar comes back to his senses and releases Snake. He begins to wonder where Hjalti might be at that moment. Thorfinn notices that the wound on Gardar's chest is severe and bleeding heavily. Arnhaid tells Gardar that Hjalti is with his brother in Burka, which makes Gardar grateful and thankful for the news. He asks Thorfinn if he can borrow his cart to make his way there, but Sverkel claims it as his own and allows Gardar to use it. Gardar thanks Sverkel and asks for his name. Arnhaid also expresses her gratitude towards Thorfinn and Einar although Thorfinn tries to warn her that Gardar's wound is fatal. However, Arnhade is firm in her decision to leave with Gardar regardless of the danger. As they depart, Gardar begins to feel the coldness of death creeping up on him, and he starts to see many faces of slaves surrounding him, a reminder of his past. His mind wanders to the birth of his son Jalti, and he recalls the promise he made to fight for him for honor and wealth. Gardar remembers the little moments of his son's life, including his first steps and the time he spent changing his diapers. However, the memories quickly turn sour as he also remembers the brutal beatings inflicted upon him by his former master. As Gardar and Arnhade continue their journey, Gardar expresses his curiosity about his son's age, thinking that he might be eight or nine. However, Arnhade tells him that Jalti is only six years old. Gardar feels apologetic for losing track of time while he was a slave and not being able to witness his son's growth. He wishes that he could have seen Jalti's cute years, but he fears that his son may have already forgotten about them. Gardar imagines that Jalti might be similar to him, a prankster who enjoys lighting horses' tails on fire, which Arnhade finds amusing. Gardar confirms that he did the same thing as a child, but it got him into trouble with his father. 
As Gardar's condition worsens, he realizes that he may not have much time left. He shares with Arnhade his concern that when Hjalti grows older, he will want to go on a Viking adventure like him, but Gardar won't allow it. Despite his fatigue and loss of blood, Gardar clings to Arnhade, telling her he will never leave her and Hjalti's side again. As Gardar rests, he has a vision of the moment he left Arnhade and Hjalti behind to go fight. He remembers the call of the other men, the thrill of battle, and the moment he agreed to leave his family. With tears in his eyes, Gardar realizes the mistake he made and swears to Arnhade that he will never make that choice again. As his vision continues, he sees himself returning home to his son Jalti, who is now six years old. He embraces him, feeling a sense of warmth and comfort. As he takes his last breath, Gardar declares that he is home. Arnhade cradles his lifeless body, sobbing as Snake's men approach them. And this brings the anime to an end. Don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell, so you never miss out on another anime recaps videos. Until next time, take care.